Ah, oh, dinky do, there you all are. A very, very warm welcome to the Scotty McClue Show. We are, of course, live on the big one. We're on Facebook Live for one hour of superb, scintillating information, education, and entertainment for not just one nation, but for all nations, of course. Welcome, 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 I say. Lovely to have you all with us. You're watching Scotty McClue, the world's top broadcaster and first lord of the internet, and of course, international icon just here saying dinky do to all of you lots and lots to discuss tonight now i know a lot of you'll be watching i'm a celebrity but i'm a celebrity as well so come and watch here big star very very important alfred james Wright, charles mclaughlin Ian walker james shervon ron stewart dinky do howard tarski uh, jerry carty david fraser hi scotty joe markey stephen nunnally alfred james Wright, and Stephen Wright. Lovely, lovely, lovely to have you all with us, of course. Sunday night, nothing ever gets past me, and we are, of course, live on Facebook Live. That's the big one. That's the one everyone's watching. That's the one everyone is talking about. Thousands watched us last week. Tremendous. Thank you very much. And, of course, so much of it is due to you guys sharing and sharing and sharing and sharing. Very, very important. I know it's a bit random, and I know that uh, a lot of you are not afraid of work, so won't mind doing it. Brom and Scotty, welcome from the land of smiles. Andy Wass, hi, Scotty, how's it hanging? John Scott, Ian Johnson, Johnson. evening, Mr. McClure, says Brian McWilliams. Bertha King Patton, welcome, welcome to you. Gary Crossan. Tremendous. So many people here. Kevin Farr, Gary Williams, and Ian Kerr. Lovely to have you with us as well. Of course, spread the word. Tell 10 to tell 10 to tell 10. We'll have share points at uh, 15, 30, 45, and double O. Very, very important as well. If you've just joined us, then welcome. Scotty McClue here with you live just for one hour. It'll pass in a flash. We've got lots to talk about. And uh, don't be distracted by television. You can have that on in the background. But Sunday night is Scotty McClue time. Sunday night, live at 9 o'clock sharp. Change of time as well. Evening, says Diggy White. Evening, Diggy. Evening, Sam, says Robert Bristol Wilson. Danny B is watching Stephen Bart McDowell. Good evening, Scotty. Good to see you again. And you, Jonathan Morton and Kevin Roberts. Lovely to have you guys with us as well. Now, uh, very important. Should we come out of the Brexit? All the mess that's going on here. Should we actually come out of the Brexit? Fifty billion pounds they are talking about. Now, for fifty billion pounds, you could get the Scotty McClue show live on national and international radio and television. And that would be a much better use of the money, I have to say. Hello from East Bride Taxi Owners Association. James and Lindsay say dinky do. James Bauer there. Alan Laurie watching. Marvellous. Stephen Bonner, lovely to have you with us. Got Celebrity Tom Dunn when you're on Scotty. Excellent. Every day, I think, should probably be watching Scotty McClue on a Sunday night. Because this program is for you. So there you are. Remember, Scotty McClue is for the people. Alan McDonald, John Bryce and Shug Plunkett. Are you doing some jungle challenges tonight, Scotty? No, I thought we'd leave that out. We kind of made our point last week. And for those of you that haven't seen it, show number 58, brilliant. Thousands have seen it. And uh, at uh, 15, just after 15, 30, 45 and 00900, we did challenges. I put on my Australian hat, went into the bush, talked Australian, and then uh, we took Jordy to make you feel at home with the challenges. So there you are. First challenge was eating a packet of crisps. For 50 billion, you could write Dinky Do on the moon. Gary Latter's watching. The High Bees win again. Scotty says Paul Gray. Excellent, Paul. Very, very good. And uh, hi, Scotty. The telly is muted, says Ian Johnson. Good, guys. Turn your tellies down. Radio's off, of course. Scotty McClue time on a Sunday night. Dinky Do, just for you. This is your program. There's no bias. There's no barriers. There's nothing to stop you communicating directly with the rest of the world via the Scotty McClue show live on Facebook Live. Sorry I'm late, Scotty. I've been trying to find a copy of the National. So there we are. Excellent, Sandy. Big, big seller, of course. So probably sold out. 
keep trying get yourself along early in the morning sandy and get yourself your copy of the national newspaper very very important scotland does not have its own media so therefore independence for scotland is quite difficult to get it discussed on the media so there you go mrs may did us a st andrew's day message but uh, as far as i could see there was no mention of indiref 2 and uh, no mention of thanking us for the 40 billion pounds to keep the uk afloat so there we are. Uh, toot toot, kick the tell you to Scotty, dinky do time, says James, dinky do James. Fran Gilhooley's watching. My wife shouted to me to take the vase off the bairn before Brexit. Before a Brexit. Very good, very good. Excellent stuff. We like a wee bit of humour as well, of course. Welcome, welcome, I say. So show number 58, this is us on show number 59 and if every single one of you can get sharing and sharing and sharing that's very much appreciated tremendous Shelley Cooper's watching Bob Huckin and Gordon Elric lovely to have you with us and Al Nichols watching dinky do Al lovely to have you with us Liz Lyon watching of course bless you Liz lovely to uh, to hear from you Martin Rowe Stephen McFarlane John Tom's watching one of our great businessmen there watching excellent stuff welcome to john toms as well uh, only one advert in it scotty great if you want to seal up the rhyme the advertisers are not on sandy um you know obviously if you've got a paper of that high quality you don't have to worry about all that sort of thing it's like the scotty mcclue show you don't see an ad break in this show yet so there we go hello hello jt lovely to have you julia diamond's watching and she's a Springer Spaniel lady. We like that. We think that's marvellous to uh, get to see all these wonderful things um, going on in Facebook. The baby elephant. Uh, busy. Nearly sorted, says JT. Good. That's excellent. You should be busy. Everybody's busy, JT. Not just your good self. So there we go. So don't worry about it. Uh, Dave's watching. Dave Humphrey excellent lovely to have you with us dave and dinky do i say from scotty McClue. thanks for taking a few moments and thanks to all of you for watching last week's show thousands upon thousands of you saw it that's fantastic and uh, what do you think of people who take mobile phones to things like dinners says john toms i think i saw one this week and somebody said a couple of my friends popped round to go on their phones anybody else fancy dropping by so there you are. I think it's antisocial and it's rude. And I think uh, phones should be used for business or for emergencies and then off. Mind you, it's not just a phone. It's really a very powerful computer with a telephonic function. And everybody's social media. As long as you're sharing Scotty McClure's show, nobody minds how much you're on your phone. Uh, remember listening to you on Hallam FM, says Jonathan Martin. Hallam FM, one of my favourite radio stations down there in Sheffield in South Yorkshire. A great FM radio station and uh, I hope it's just as good. I wouldn't be surprised if it's just as good as it ever was. But Scotty McClue absolutely was massive in Yorkshire. Scotty, do you think the EU should have given us the reforms we asked for? Sandy, 50 billion pounds they're looking for for this silly brexit i say what you would say if somebody overcharges you and say we'll need to think about it then i would rescind article 50 and say it might take us a couple of years but there is no rush to leave the eu it's not something that can be done quickly anyway and uh, there is absolutely no rush to leave the eu i hope you saw the st andrews night address to the falkland islands Throughout the Commonwealth from Scotty McClue. Look that up. It turned out they wanted to watch your show, so we've decided that etiquette at the table is only able to be breached if it's the Scotty McClue show. I absolutely could not agree more. Fantastic stuff. That's not what I asked, Scotty. What did you ask, Sandy? Where are you stuck? Always ask Scotty McClue, because he knows best. And you'll get the truth from Scotty McClue. You might not always like the truth from Scotty McClue, but you will nevertheless get the truth from Scotty McClue. Dinky you do. Charlie Strack is watching. Does your dog always lead you, says Julia Diamond. Yes, Julia. My dog takes me for a walk two times a day at least, minimum. 
So there we are, Machair Peveral. Uh, hey, Scotty, a wee joke for you. Why does it take longer to build blonde snowmen than a regular one? You have to hollow out the heat. Harsh, harsh, savage on all our wonderful, clever, clever blonde people who are watching. Good evening, Scotty, this is Johnny Strachan. Good evening, Johnny Dinky Doo. Stuart Jackson's watching. So there we are. Get your next question in, Sandy, because we're here. And I think what we should say, Mrs. May should say to Europe, OK, so we're looking at around 50 billion. Right, leave it with me and I'll come back to you. I'll rescind Article 50 just now because it might not be worth our while leaving the EU. Although I have to say, Scotland gives 40 billion to Westminster for squandering every year. So there you go. Uh, Scotty, what about the right-wing media calling Harry's Megan mixed race. She's a human being and a beautiful one, says Alfred and James Wright. Alfred James Wright, absolutely, they should not be calling anybody mixed race. There is only one race, the human race, and we're all members of it. And you'd be very, very surprised if you popped your own DNA, a little spitloot into a cup, and then some examination. We're all Africans from the Rift Valley. A lot of us came via ancient Ireland. So we're Irish first, uh, sorry, we're African first and Irish second. And that will include Meghan as well. She would originate in the African Rift Valley as would Prince Harry's family. So there we go. Uh, give them nothing. They give us nothing, Scotty. You know that though. Well, I don't know, Sandy. I wasn't a great one for the EU in the early days the way Scottish fishing was lost out. No fishing in Aberdeen and Fraserborough and Montrose and Oban and Carradale and Stornoway. That wasn't good news when the EU took over the fishing, but, eh, and then the farming. And I have to say, people are doing, doing rather well out of the EU, lots and lots of jobs, and it would be madness to leave it. Hello, Scotty, watching you the way home from pantomime in Motherwell, says Alex Robertson, one of our most talented actors. Talented young actor Alex Robertson playing in pantomime at the Motherwell Panto just now. And uh, tell us where it is, Alex. I'm assuming it's the Civic Theatre, but do tell. Remember listening to you on Empire Radio, Scotty, during the Siege of Khartoum, says Ian Walker. Yes, Stuart McKenna, lovely to have you with us. I'm Irish, says Stephen Donaghy. Lots of us are. We all are, we're all, are all Irish, actually. All, every single one of us. Here we go. Mmm. And that's Ireland, the real Ireland. We're not Northern Ireland, because obviously the six counties weren't annexed until 1922. You try and get a job as a fisherman, Scotty, all taken up by people on low wages. Francis Donnelly's watching. Uh, you try and get a job as a shepherd in London, Sandy, and see how you get on. Um, I remember listening to you years ago with my dog watching, says Stephen Donaghy. Congratulations to Prince Harry and Meghan. Colin Rogers watching, dinky do. I think every single one of us would like to send congratulations to His Royal Highness Prince Henry of Wales and Meghan Markle on the wonderful occasion of their engagement. Tremendous. Any plans for Hogman A, Scotty, says Mark Gippert. I've been in touch with a couple of the big radio groups to see if they want to take the Scotty McClue Hogman A bash, because it would be very much to their advantage. It would mean that uh, they were getting a proper Hogman A programme, tried and tested, a safe pair of hands. They could rest easy in their beds. And um, also there wouldn't be the argy-bargy, but I try to listen to the radio Hogman A. It was dreadful, and, 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 and I watched the tele, tele, it was terrible, they had some pop band on, you know. The EU paid for the trawlers with their grants, says Ian Johnson. Where's this man now, at, uh, the Tory that was in charge of farming and fishing? Uh, so there we are, and uh, Ian Walker mentions all senior politicians and says they're out of their depth. He wants to see Dennis Skinner as president of a republic. Well, of course, any anti-monarchists are completely aff. They're huge, Ian. So I wouldn't be going down that road. Uh, yes, playing the king and Jack and the Beanstalk in the Motherwell Civic Theatre, heading home driven by James Barry, who plays Dame Trot. So they are in relation to J.M. Barry, the famous author Peter Pan and Wendy. Chris Party's watching Dinky Doo. Chris, lovely to have you with us. 
Scotty, what about the bins in Wishy? Says Jim Hoey. What about them? There's lots of them, Jim. But tell us more. Peter Martin there. Whoops, we're up to share point, guys. Can every single one of you, and I mean every one of you, and remember I can see it here, please share now. Share, 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 share. Tell Ted, tell Ted, tell Ted, tell Ted about Scotty McClue. Live on Facebook Live just for you saying dinky do. Everybody share it. Share, 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 share. Do it right now, guys. And uh, if you've got a minute, tap, 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 de tap, tap, de tap, de tap. I am watching Scotty McClue. And right click on my Facebook um, URL and stick that out there. Moira Murray's watching. Come on, Moira, on you come, my dear. Monica's again. Scotty, give us a break. Ian Walker, you're the one that starts it. You're the one that doesn't understand the great benefits that the monarchy brings to this country. They are £1.8 billion they bring in, and it costs us all 52 pence a year. Lovely, lovely, lovely stuff. Absolute bargain. The one thing that's working well in this country at the moment. So let's not go after the monarchy. So there you go. Hello again, Scotty. Have had a great weekend. I hope you have too, says Chris. <laughs> Absolutely, Chris. I've had a fantastic, phenomenal weekend. Uh, what about the engagement? I don't know. Can Harry be classed as royal? Of course he can. Stephen Donachie, he's the son of Lady Diana Spencer, the Princess of Wales, the late Princess of Wales and Charles Prince of Wales. So there you are, very much a royal man. Uh, what's your favourite tipple, Scotty? This is Gordon Drysdale. I'm afraid, Gordon, I'm on to the hot chocolate nowadays. I gave up the sauce a couple of Christmases ago because I couldn't be bothered with all this, trying to calculate how many units I've had and was I able to drive yet and what time would I be able to drive and go and pick people up? All that stuff. So I thought, best plan, chuck it in, and then um, that's that sorted. So there you are. I had a, quite a cheeky policeman one night stop me and he said, to him, I can't smell drink after you anyway. And I thought, well, that's good because I haven't had you for two years. So there you are. Uh, Dinky do, Scotty. Um, so there we are. Excellent stuff. So there we are, um, I shall have to just, Stephen, no I'm not having that, so uh, I'll delete that Stephen, but I'll leave you still as part of it. Yeah, you can't put things like that up. Uh, do you think uh, Trump will be impeached, Scotty? His new friends are turning against him. Also, his support of British racists. Well, the thing is, as I say, you can't really have racism unless you have a them and us. And there is only us, the human race. You may have people of different religions. So there you go. And I, the one thing I would say about Donald Trump, and it's one of the first things I learned when I was on a board in business. So there you are, when I was looking at corporate governance. And the one thing I learned about that was from a wonderful man who'd been the um, uh, director and secretary of an ITV company. And he said to me, he said, if you don't respect the incumbent, you must respect the office. So regardless of what anyone in the world thinks of Donald Trump, he is the President of the United States of America. So there we are. And um, there we are, Ian Walker. We'll have to take that out. So there we go. Delete that. Um, so there you are. And Ian Walker, I'll have to block you if you put stuff like that in. I've run out of tea bags. I'm driving to the shops. So I, I'll leave the tea and watch Scotty McClue. So not when you're driving, though. Remember, you've got to be ice free. Which Scottish city do you prefer, Edinburgh or Glasgow? Well, Chris, I've lived in all the Scottish cities. I've lived in Edinburgh. I lived in Glasgow. I've worked in Dundee. I've lived in Aberdeen. I've lived in Carlisle. I've lived in Newcastle. I've lived in Sheffield twice. I've lived in um, London. I've lived in Preston. So there you go. Marvellous stuff. So they've both got great things. What about 50 billion Brexit, my dear, says uh, Julia Diamond. So there we are. We're all one race, the human race. We should be helping each other, not fighting, says Catherine Scully in a big kiss. Catherine Scully, you're always correct. You're a very wise lady, a wise woman. So there we go. And uh, Julia, yes, 50 billion pounds. I wouldn't pay it. It's our 50 billion pounds. I get a little annoyed at this money 
disappearing somewhere. Now, money. Remember, I am a banker. All right? We all got that. Banker. All right? And um, you have to have a double entry bookkeeping system. So if something is debited or taken out of one place, it has to be credited or put in to another. If something is credited to one place, it has to be debited from another place. And that's it. So you can't lose money. So we need to make people accountable and say, find it. I mean, I've stayed till nine, ten o'clock at night in a bank office looking for one penny. And we found it because it has to balance. At 1.8 billion, couldn't we get rid of the Rawls and hire the best negotiating team? Sales staff, admin, promotional staff for selling the UK abroad. Wouldn't we have better trade and better? Stephen, you're talking absolute bunkum. The Royals are a bargain. You will not get other people for 52 pence per person. So don't be silly. At 1.8 billion, that's what they personally are bringing in. The trade agreements on top of that will be massive. So there you go. Lots of kisses from the lovely Julia Diamond. Dinky doo. Eddie Doby Senior is watching. Welcome. There's no Brexit is a mockery of democracy. Yes. Now, it's not too late to rescind Article 50. Right? Theresa May could do that tomorrow. Now, she's done many, many, many U-turns. Right? We could actually call her Yui if she lived in Scotland. Hello, Yui. How are you getting on? And uh, Scottish for Huey. But, um, you know, she could do a U-turn on this. It would be no problem. A volta face and say, right, what we're doing here, we'll think about it. 50 million, we just wanted to see what the price was. We're starting to put genuine detail. And uh, that's the way it should be. Scotty, what do you think of Prince Harry? Excellent fellow. Lovely chap. So there we are. And I wish him and his good lady all the best. Would you ban smoking in cars if you're Prime Minister? Yeah, I'd ban smoking in cars anyway, even if I'm not Prime Minister. Um, Scotty, I get annoyed when the Royals get billions. We have to make the monarchy accountable for their own lifestyles. Ian Walker, don't ever get annoyed because they don't get billions. The billions are ours. All the palaces, with one or two exceptions, belong to the people, right? So it's yours and mine. Now, we have to be thankful that we personally are not always paying for the upkeep, right? Buckingham Palace hasn't been refurbished for years. Buckingham Palace was bought for £5,000 from the Earl of Buckingham. So there you are. So the Royals don't get billions. Thank you, do, Scotty. Your point about Donald Trump, I understand about respecting the office. But in your opinion, with his antics, is he not bringing the integrity of the US down? So there we are. Uh, great to have R, and I can't press C more, Dave Harley, because the last time I did that, I lost the whole broadcast. So we don't want to do that. Um, in terms of, is Donald Trump bringing the whole thing down? Well, he's bringing it up to date. He's using uh, things like Twitter and other social media to get his points across. Now, he's also bringing a lot of attention to America and to him, right? And uh, he is a businessman. He was one of the few businessmen that we've had in politics, if you like. Uh, you know, John F. Kennedy. John F. Kennedy's father was a businessman. Sorry about my poor typing, says Dave Harley. It's not your poor typing, Dave. I just can't go to uh, hit next. Aye, says Sandy Howden. Aye, Sandy. I knew you'd come round to agreeing with Scotty McClue. Uh, make Buckhouse a place for the homeless. Michael McGuigan. That's just silly thinking. It's highly, highly unsuited as a place for the homeless. The homeless would suffer dreadfully in Buckhouse, right? It's all very well having beautiful decoration like wedding cakes and that. But some of that old plaster comes down. The homeless could get clobbered if they were lying sleeping under that. Also, there's 400 nod rooms in Buckingham Palace. Some of them are secret rooms. The homeless would be very confused, right? And then they would have to walk miles and miles inside to get places. They'd be better with, uh, you know, a quick soup kitchen and stuff like that. So there you are. Lady Diana did so much dropping into Centre Point and all that sort of thing in London. So the Rawls are very, very, very socially aware. So don't be fooled into thinking they get billions. That's all 
you know, set dressing, if you like, so that Britain keeps its place in the world as a world power. So there you are. But don't think the Royals get any great privilege. I would not want their job. If somebody came along and said to me now, right, if they said to me right now, uh, you're going to be a royal, by the way, I would say, no, 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 no. In fact, I've said it, because apparently if you trace my ancestry back, I am royal. How about that then? And I once said to my father, I found a title, and I said to my father, do you think I should use this? And he said to me, I wouldn't bother with any of that. You'll end up selling tickets for things. <laughs> my father was one of the wisest men you could meet. So there you are. I might not have a lot of wisdom, but I was brought up with it. Um, North Korea is going to attack a big city in the USA, and Trump's just sitting in his hands. So there you are. The wee leader has told him he's going to do it. Trump's a chump, says Ian Walker. No, 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 no. He'll not be sitting in his hands. Don't you worry yourself. No, Scotty. Ian Walker asked if I was a Yoon. And I said, I. But you know I'm a Yoon. Yeah, but that's just because you're misinformed, Sandy. If, you, uh, if I was to sit you down and talk to you properly about it, you would become an indie very quickly. Probably an hour would do it. Trump's never had a business success. He's got money handed to him for his father. He lost most of it. The Bank of China's owed eight hundred million from Trump, and if they called it in, he would close. Says uh, John Toms. Well, we shall see what's what, John Toms. Um, North Korea has never attacked anyone. Says John Toms. Well, there you go. Right, and uh, America has, hasn't it? Wadge is there. Hello, Wadge. Lots of smiles. James Michael Harvey. Excellent stuff. Hello, Scotty. A new survey says hands-free is just as bad as being on the phone at the same time while driving. Does it really mean you can't speak in the car at the same time when people are in the car? Well, when people are in the car, you usually have a good blether, but I also am very aware of the driver, so I don't sort of shout, Oh, look at that! Suddenly, when somebody's driving. You know, I don't do any of these things. Uh, so you've got to keep concentrating on your driving. Perhaps we don't need phones in the car. Hands-free, of course, is just like having someone in the car now. People, do, do you not? I mean, I don't have one of these modern cars, but do people not uh, dial off the steering wheel and things like that now? Good evening, Scotty. You are the antithesis of Analog Man. Check out Giant Head Collective, new single Analog Man. Keep up the good work informing the ill-informed. Colin Roger. Colin uh, has uh, brought out a song, Analog Man. And he said, was this you before you discovered Facebook? And of course, I had to explain to him that Scotty McClure has always been ahead of his time and has always been absolutely leap, leaping and bounding ahead in the use of technology. So there you go. Uh, what's a tune, Sandy? Says Alfred James Wright. So there you are. I suppose it's smaller than a city. It doesn't have a cathedral. Uh, Jim Hoy, the majority voted for the exit from the EU, but we've not got it to date. Pre-EU, do you remember the UK, particularly Scottish industry, we had now gone? Well, that was really Thatcher, I suppose. At the same time as we joined the EU, Thatcher got rid of Scottish industry to protect London. So um, I don't think that's EU stuff. Although I was also a wee bit suspicious of the foot and mouth. So there you go. So I remember somebody saying a lot of the wood had been ordered before the outbreak. Um, we've seen Prince Harry and Meghan last week. They came to Nottingham. Great couple. So down to earth, says Steve Burrows. Dinky do, Steve Burrows. I think they're lovely, lovely people. I would quite imagine they're lovely people. The whole family are delightful. And I get very annoyed when people knock them just because they don't understand what they're there for. They don't understand the function. Scotty, you got the number for dial a drink, says Rab Hill. I was seen for, oh yes, we got that one. Hi, sir, says Amir Shazad. Hello, lovely to have you, Amir, uh, with us tonight. Very, very busy tonight. Now, guys, I've barely stopped, but it's half past nine. We need to share, 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 share. Time flies when you're enjoying yourself. And can you type, 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 type? Tell Ted to tell Ted to tell Ted to tell Ted that you're watching Scotty McClue. We're live on Facebook Live. It's the world's top talk show. I am the world's top broadcaster. And uh, also I am the first lord of the internet. So there you go. 
Uh, excellent stuff. America dropped more bombs on Vietnam than they did in World War II. Uh, least said about Thatcher the best, says Dave Harley. I think so, Dave. I think she was very, very not good for the rest of this country. Scotty, you should get your portrait done and try to put it up in one of the palaces. More chance of eating an apple through a letterbox. I don't need my portrait done. There's my portrait there. Yes. Can you see that? Can you see that? There. There you go. There's my clue with Lord Wreath. And I think there's another one somewhere. There you go. There's Scotty McClue. I don't need my portrait done. I don't need any trimmings. I travel light. I mean, where is my top of the range watch? Where is my jewellery? Hmm? All that stuff. I don't need any of that. So there we are. Uh, now, America dropped more bombs in North Korea, not Vietnam. I think they dropped a good few bombs in Vietnam, John Toms. Uh, a Tory lover. How can you love Thatcher? Who's the Tory lover? Who's, who are you referring to, Michael McGuigan? I've just told you about the damage that I feel Thatcher did to the country. Laws has in Walker. So there we are. Paul Gray, uh, he said he doesn't believe in the royal family. Paul Gray, you're just needing a wee bit of education. You stick with Scotty McClue, and I will inform, educate, and hopefully even entertain you. And it doesn't cost you a bean. Talking of which... We've uh, changed all the funding for Scotty McClue. So it's now called Grow the Show. And if you'd like to put a fiver in or something like that, www.gofundme.com forward slash Scotty hyphen McClue. You'll get them all on the Scotty McClue website and dinky do. So there you are. Uh, no more drop to North Korea than anywhere else. Look it up. John Toms, I don't need to look anything up. All the knowledge is here so there we are remember scotty mcclue was with you long before there was googles and um social media and phones and any of that so we don't need to be looking stuff up all the time so there we are i read books went to libraries talked to people met some of the world's leaders all these things there you go um i'm a historian um got men out of mines says julia diamond uh, who got men out of the mines? Yes, Thatcher. I see what you mean, because do you remember um, Willie Hamilton? Now, he was a wee bit anti-royalist. He was, I think, the Member of Parliament for East Fife. Am I correct? Willie Hamilton. He was the Labour Member of Parliament for East Fife. And, of course, East Fife had a tremendous amount of mines. Am I right? And he actually said that he would like to see the day when nobody had to go down a mine again. So there you are. And he was an anti-royalist. And I don't normally have any time for these people because they're daft as brushes. What did you say about the funding there, Scotty, says Peter Martin? Funding for what, uh, Peter? A royal down to earth. My sides are splitting. Get them to visit a food bank. In Walker, the royals visit many, many, many food banks without your knowledge. So there you are, for security reasons, obviously, it's not always covered. Princess Diana was going and um, she had her boys sleeping out with the homeless. So they realised what it was like. Both William and Harry slept out with the homeless. So let's not split your sides and the rest of it. Grow up. Um, any news about going more than once a week, says Steve Burroughs. Uh, well, Steve, this is very, very interesting at the moment. As I say, I know it sounds like it's taking an age, but I'm talking to very, very senior people in the radio and television industry. We're very interested in taking the show, but we're working out formats and things like that. I would like to be working for a big television company that had access to telephones. Mum's the word. Get my drift. So there we are. <clears throat> then we can have a phone in and everyone can talk. Tom McGovern's watching. Uh, true, Thatcher's never a fan of the EU, but possibly she knew we'd be forced to buy cheap products from them rather than buy British. Does anybody remember the Buy British campaign? Uh, have you all shared, by the way? Share, 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 share. Share, 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 share. Television's turned down in the background. You are uh, allowed, obviously, to watch I'm a Celebrity, but keep it down in the background because Sunday night is Scotty McClune. I, I apologise. We touch of the luggy this week, but we're fine. 
Um, so there we are. Uh, Dave Hallish also destroyed towns and put more people in the dole than in offices. So there you are. Yes, she did. America has never won a war in its own country, apart from the American Civil War. Um, well, the War of Independence, they apparently won that. Although I don't know how wise that was. They could still have been part of Britain, perhaps. They should still come home to Mama. Uh, True, Thatcher was never a fan of the EU. Yes, we've done that one. Uh, Scotty, do you believe we should stop selling arms to Saudi Arabia while they're destroying Yemen and starving the people? Well, the problem with Yemen, I mean, their girls were in Yemen. They were in Aden while the British were leaving. I think the British should have hung on in Aden. And then they would have had a pivotal point in the middle of the world between East and West. But uh, the British got out of Aden and uh, Colin Mitchell and the, his Argyles kept Argyle law going right up until the end and even took Crater back for the British. But we had um, Healy and uh, who else did we have in Parliament? It was a Labour government at that time and they just wanted to run away. The British were very good at taking over places but not so good at getting out of them. And of course Lord Mountbatten got us out of India. He did a pretty good job, but um, the partitioning was, was uh, very poor, although that wasn't uh, up to him. It was drawn up so quickly. Uh, so there you are, the Balfour Declaration for the Middle East in 1917, 64 word letter. Remember Sierra Leone? So there we are. <clears throat> yes, we do remember that, Michael. Um, America being part of Britain, says Stephen McFarlane. Yes. That's what I was thinking, Stephen. What about that as an idea? America comes home to Mama. You make Donald Trump the last president and you put America under the British monarchy, which is the envy of the world. Um, so there we are. Uh, Chick Murray jokes as Gordon say, Seymour, I can't press Seymour, Gordon, in case I lose the broadcast. It was the uh, French that put the British out of America. The Americans should remember that. Oui, je comprends, oui. Je regrette que je ne parle pas français très vite, si tu parles de bon. Peut-être je comprends. Yes, General Wolfe at Quebec in Canada in the 1740s. He was in there, the British were in there. And uh, what's your views on the Israeli-Palestine situation? Well, of course, <coughs> pardon me, Palestine was, the British again were in Palestine and had occupied Palestine. Then the Balfour Declaration um, to let the Jewish people have their own state. Now, the Jewish people were obviously getting uh, very um, misplaced and what have you, you know. So, the, the, you know, they were getting disenfranchised throughout Europe. So they did need to have a place. But the whole thing is this creeping towards the sea and pushing back the Palestinians. And you also have Christian Arabs. Did you know that? There's um, uh, such a, a group as the Christian Arabs. So there we are. The biggest diamond was found in, where was that, Julia Diamond? Um, tell us where that is. Um, Israel is a murderous state, says John Thompson. Well, all states have got that capacity and facility, John Thompson. And all states at some point will use it. So there you go. The famine that's going on, the money that's actually beneath the soil in Yemen is massive, but of course the leaders um, are, it's ensured that it's not coming out of the ground. Massive, massive, um, wealthy, wealthy country, South Yemen, but of course in total poverty and famine right at the moment. Famine and poverty are always political. I mean, you look at, uh, look at Zimbabwe, the breadbasket of Africa, and um, Robert Mugabe, had of course turned it into despot territory, the terrific poverty and suffering. Um, how about the Koh Noor? The biggest gem found, stolen by the empire, says Julia Diamond. Well, borrowed by the empire. I mean, Napoleon, when he had his empire, he was off with all the treasures of Egypt. So there we are. True Radio, sharing your link, Scotty McClue. Henry Newton, I say to you, dinky do. Um, if you just joined us, then, um, yeah, uh, John Toms, yeah, the British state is, yeah, but John Toms, you've got to remember that you're British, so you're actually going against your own country when you're coming out with that. So there you are, although Britain itself 
is not a country. There is no such country as Britain, and there is such no country as the United Kingdom. So there we are. There is Scotland, England, Northern Ireland, and Wales. So there we are. Those are the countries. I feel sorry for the Jewish people. They've been persecuted for centuries in every country by every nationality. So there we are. I think I am in the minority. No, I don't think so, Ian. I mean, I think we do uh, feel for the Jewish people. But as somebody said recently, anti-Semitic used to be somebody who hated the Jews, right? Anti-Semitic now has become somebody that the Jews hate. And I thought, that's very, very interesting. Very interesting take on it. So in other words, you're anti-Semitic if anybody speaks out about what Israel are doing at that particular time. Now, Tom says he's Norwegian Irish. You might be surprised. You're originally African, of course, and uh, you would come via uh, Ireland, and then there would be input from, uh, I mean, uh, I've got a lot of input from the Vikings. So there you are. So there's a bit of that. So you need to check it out, John Thomas. You need to spit in a little cup and get it all examined at the lab. Uh, Ian Walker, you're confused between Jewish people and Israel. The two aren't connected, So John Thomas. Well, I think they are connected, John Thomas. There are a lot of Jewish people in Israel. I can tell you that. So there we are. Now, how are we doing? Um, we've got a share point coming up. Louise Megan is watching. Thank you do, Louise. Um, I thought it was Megan that was watching. Um, no nation has a right to undermine any nation's sovereignty. The empire is dead. If Scotland hadn't been next door, we'd have been gone decades ago, says Ian Johnson. Very interesting, Ian. Very, very good point. I mean, I think Scotland should be self-governing. And uh, it's not from a political point of view at all. It's from an economic point of view. Scotland should be keeping its own income. If we have to pay a levy down south after we've paid all our own expenses, then uh, we could talk about that. But Scotland should be keeping its own income. Scotland's income should not be going to Westminster because I don't think that you can be in London and actually understand Scottish governance. So there you go. Also, Scotland has lost absolute fortunes billions and billions and billions of its oil revenue taken down to Westminster. So there you are. So Scotland should have its own oil fund and it should be a very, very rich nation. But Scotland, of course, was running the empire for the rest of the country. It's in the royal crowns, as Julia Diamond, the corner. So there you are. Yes, absolutely. Um, now, uh, the New York Jewish groups have come out in protest against Israel. 2,000 of them came out a few weeks ago against Israel again. Yes, you'll get that. It's like um, Islamic people protesting against um, IS. You know, there's a terrific amount of that. Scotty, I think your better half is fiddling with the thermostat. You're looking a bit warm. So Charles McLaughlin, I am a little bit warm, Charles. I might have a comfort break in a moment. We haven't stopped since we started, if you get it. Busy, busy show tonight. Right, folks, let's start sharing now. Every single one of you, without exception, share, share, share. Right click on uh, the URL for the Scotty McClue page and send it out. Follow Scotty McClue on Twitter. Follow Scotty McClue on LinkedIn. Follow Scotty McClue on Periscope. Follow Scotty McClue on uh, the YouTube channel, the Scotty McClue YouTube channel. Share, 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 share. Share, 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 share. When, in your opinion, will Scotland finally leave the United Kingdom, says Peter Martin? Scotty, I reckon when there's no oil left or no demand for it, whichever comes first. Well, the United Kingdom would have got rid of Scotland right away if uh, it hadn't been worth so much to them. And it would take a long, 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 long time for the oil to run out. But oil is not our major source of income. We have many, many other exports. We are a breadbasket. And of course, we have the water and the electricity, the renewable power, all that sort of stuff going on in Scotland. So Scotland is a very, very, very wealthy country. We need to be feeding our children, though. Shouldn't be a single food bank in Scotland. Scotty, a Tory MP is caught taking selfies. 
when opening a food bank. It's like a Monty Python sketch. This is the world we live in. Ian, uh, you know, you will get that. There's also, I mean, a lot of politics is opportunism. So remember that. And remember, politicians don't often do very much. They talk about doing it. So let's look at the economics and leave the politics out of it, yeah? Uh, put your fan on if you're hot. I don't just have one fan. I have billions of fans. So there we are. Well said, Scotty McClure, says Ian Johnston, dinky-doo. Totally agree, says Peter Martin. Yes, I think so. I mean, Scotland is more than capable of self-governance. I think the word nationalist has not actually helped the cause of Scottish nationalism because it's the antithesis of nationalism. It's the antithesis of British nationalism. So there you are. The Scottish National Party are a left of centre caring party. And I'm not a political animal. I'm not a Scottish nationalist. But economically, Scotland should be governing itself. So there we are. Uh, we're on Scottish powers, says Steve Burroughs. I'm not sure why, Scotty, but you don't seem to be an unbiased presenter. Jim Hoy, I am totally unbiased. I have no bias at all. Where would my bias be? What is my bias? Point it out. Because I actually deeply, deeply resent that concept. But Scotty McClure is uh, not unbiased. Of course I am unbiased. As much as one can be. You're going to have an opinion, aren't you? Uh, if you want to help local food banks, follow Bread OB Glasgow and buy the album. All proceeds to local food banks, says John Thomas. Absolutely, John. Much appreciated. Although, as I say, there shouldn't be a single food bank. There is plenty of money in Scotland and plenty of money should be coming into Scotland. What the British government could be doing if they want to put themselves to good use is uh, getting a hold of the wealthies who are domiciled in Britain and bring back on shore some of the trillions of pounds that are put out there for tax avoidance. So there we are. Um, I'm at home, Danny, mate, says Peter Martin. If the SNP would allow fracking, we would be richer. After James Wright, fracking. You have people saying to you about fracking. Let's explain about fracking. It's not really dangerous. All that sort of stuff. Once you start moving, you'll start to disturb the Earth's plates the earth's core and once you start doing that you'll move the tectonic plates and the whole thing will turn into an earthquake that's my thinking but i'm happy to be proved wrong uh, it's in your words scotty you're selective in what you reply to not at all jim Hoy. i shall reply to anything if it's properly asked oil on the left food banks on the right something isn't right yes a woman interviewed in aberdeen in 2014 well if that's the case John Toms she was quite right something isn't right and as I say what this country needs to adopt is double entry bookkeeping we take that from there we put it there all right uh, the crust will crack says Michael McGuigan yes it could do and the crust is quite thin and um, relatively speaking of course to the rest of the earth's core and um, so there you go Ronnie Ginch McGlinchy is watching. Dinky do, Ronnie Ginch McGlinchy. Lovely to have you with us. You're watching Scotty McClue, the world's top broadcaster, first lord of the internet, broadcasting live on the world's top broadcast platform. Facebook Live, the one everyone's watching, the one everyone's talking about. And uh, if you happen to have I'm a Celebrity on in the background, that's allowed, provided you're watching Scotty McClue. But radios and televisions should be off. Night all, have a nice one, says John Toms. Night night, John Toms. You're looking for a platform for a job on radio, says Jim Hoey. Absolutely, Jim, yes. If you've got any platforms, do let me know. Uh, we want to go multi-platform because Scotty McClue, the 50 billion that we're talking about squandering in Europe for Brexit, Brexit that could go to the Scotty McClue show. And that would be money well spent. I'm totally against fracking myself. Agree, Scott, it's a dangerous business, worse than mining. Think of the future. Yes, let's look at what the mines did. The mines are all down there. A lot of them flooded now, of course. But um, there are properties and places like the west end of Glasgow. Mary Hill was a mining area. I uh, used to stay in Mary Hill. And uh, the properties did have an element of movement. But the mining was, of course, at an end then. 
Uh, for example, nobody predicted sinkholes from previous mines. What could fracking cause? Absolutely, Dave. Yes, we need to look at it a bit more. It's just NIMBYs that don't want fracking. Arthur James Wright, would you, are you a NIMBY? Would you like fracking outside your hoose? There we are. Your wind is all cracking and your hoose moving. Sorry, Teesside, says Danny. So there we are. Excellent. The Irish border is going to be mob day and night. People buying cheap uh, booze in the Republic and smuggling it back. Says Ian Walker. So there we are. Well, you won't have to smuggle it if the border is open. The border's open right now. I'll tell you, when I was touring Ireland, I'll tell you, where I actually got stopped, I came over via Ballycastle to Campbelltown. And it was in Campbelltown I got stopped. Nothing between the north and the south in Ireland. Wee cup of tea. Absolutely lush. So there we are. All righty, Scotty. Can the audience get a wee tune from the squeeze box? Says Jim Stephen Gibb. You keep putting holes in the earth, it's going to bite back. Robert Riley Dowd, seniors watching. Dinky do, Robert Riley Dowd. You're, you're the antithesis of irony, says Julia Diamond. Absolutely, Julia. So there we go. Right, what were you wanting? Something on the squeeze box. Oh, see if we can get you a wee tune. Uh, for just taking it up this afternoon um tea with a wee drama bit honestly scotty uh you do my nut in but i still love you says jim Hoy. well yes i shouldn't be doing your nut in jim because we're just telling you the truth so there we are that doesn't mean everyone likes the truth somebody said this afternoon yes you do tell the truth scotty but not about the royals but i said no no i tell the truth about the royals but you don't like it so there we are fantastic the legends says ron stewart volcanoes and a pressure valve to the Earth's core. Of course, Dan, there's quite a few eruptions recently. Everybody gets stopped in Campbelltown. They don't see many visitors because the road's long and windy. Now, when I came off the boat, a policeman says, can I ask where you've come from? I said, just off the boat from Bally Castle. He said, can I ask what you're doing here? I said, having a holiday. I'm an Argyle man. He said, ah, that's it. So, and he said, and where are you going? I said, here. Campbelltown. So there we are. Um, now, somebody else is playing that, says Daniel Matthews. I wish they were, Danny, but there you are. If somebody else was playing it, it would be a lot better played. So there we are. Well played, says Jim Stephen Gibb. Are you doing a live feed for the bells, Scotty? I think we should, Peter. I think we should do Scotty McClue's Hogmanay Bash. The truth hearts Scotty's and Julia Diamond. It does, doesn't it? They don't always like it, Julia. But that doesn't mean Scotty McClue will stop telling it. So there you are. I tell it like it is. Pressure will come through where it can, which is why fracking needs more insight. We just don't know. No, we need to calm it down. Like I'm saying about Brexit, what Mrs May should say to the EU this week is, right, you've uh, had it your way for too long. Here's what's happening now. I'm going to rescind Article 50, because 50 billion quid is far too much. You'll not be getting that, and uh, I'll rescind Article 50, and we'll go home and think again, as the old song says. Hey, man, says Carl Carlos Donnelly. Knew the box. I'm going to have a nightmare now. Jingle bells. Put jingle bells on the box. So there we are. You're an awful man. You're a harsh man. I would have to uh, do a wee bit of practice for that. Uh, so there we are. But we could try. We could try. Do you want, do you want jingle bells? Do you want me to see if we can... Do a wee bit of jingle bells. Um, oh, you're a hard man. Right, we'll see what we can get out of this. Now. Uh... There you 
Jingle. A wee Jingle Bells. It's Christmas just a con. Conceived by capitalism. No, Jim Howie. Christmas marks Christ's Mass. Christ Netra. The coming of the Christ Child. Right, check eh, out the Gospel of St. Luke. So there you are. They're wearing that same field, shepherds abiding, keeping watch over their flocks by night. And an angel of the Lord appeared, and they were sore afraid. Fear not, said the angel, for unto us this day in the city of David a child is born, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. So there we are. Go and spread the word. So there we are. Oh, it's our accordion situation down. Of course it is. Good job, man. Amazing. Is that no the jungle drums? So there we are. What about the Illuminati? There's Jim Hoey. Jim Hoey, if the Illuminati existed, do you not think Scotty McClue would be one of the members? So there you are. Who's in the photo behind you, Scotty? That's me, Danny. Gordon Hayes watching. Dinky do. Uh, have we time for one more share, guys? Right, share, 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 share. And also, if you want to stick a fiver in the box or a pound in the box, GoFundMe.com, you'll see it. Grow the show, it's called. And uh, stick something in there. Religion and monarchy, Scotty, you need help. Ian Walker, religion and monarchy. Remember, billions throughout the world. I mean, there's three billion. Uh, am I not right in thinking there are three billion Catholics in the world? Three billion Christians in the world. Three billion Christians in the world. Oh, so there you go. So I think uh, maybe you've got one or two people might disagree with you. The monarchy, they've been around for a couple of thousand years. The Scottish monarchy, dinky do. So there we are. McClure, would you like a few old bus seats for the house? Gordon Sterling. I'll have to say, if I could find a use for them, I was just admiring them this morning. I would be on to you like a shot. If I was running a ferry across the Forth, I would put the bus seats in it, you know, because they're excellent for small ferries. And of course, it, uh, it, it measures everything out. It calibrates the people that are in the bus seats to either side. So you've got four. Uh, there we are. So yes, I would love your bus seats. But uh, I haven't anywhere in the house to put them. Uh, Scotty, I've just phoned. <laughs> I've just phoned. You see, the guy used to bend the spoons to put a stop to me playing the accordion. Well played, says Ian Johnson. I think it was all right, Ian, considering zero practice. And we're just sort of picking it up. You know what I mean? Because uh, it's a wee button key, so there's no piano keys on it. And I'm a piano key man, as everybody well knows. So there we are. So the piano keys, excellent stuff. Keep sharing, guys. Share, 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 share. We are just about out of time. What a fantastic show tonight. Tremendous. Yes, there we are. We've just got a minute to go. So what I'll do is, um, I always wanted a red phone box in my living room. So Dave Harley, yes, the, the Gilbert Scott phone box. Gilbert Scott, who uh, also did Liverpool Cathedral. There we are. Started it, I think, in about... 1908 and it wasn't finished till 1972 he did the anglican cathedral in liverpool fantastic wonderful um so there were bubonic plague's been around a thousand years uh, no it hasn't ian walker it was uh, a very short visitor thank goodness so there you are the great fire of london put uh, paid to that i can tell you that right now uh good night scotty good night danny good night gordon sterling Good luck with the bus seats. They're fabulous stuff. They're beautiful things. They really are. So are the buses. Gordon Sterling, on the buses. That's all I've got to say to you. Guys, I'm going to have to dash. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for a wonderful program tonight. Absolutely phenomenal. I think I'll sing you the song. Are you ready? Goodbye, everybody. Goodbye. Take care, everybody, as you go. Goodbye, everybody of Wittersing. Au revoir and a cheery oh Cheerio guys, take care of yourselves. Uh, Julia Diamond, what's the difference between an accordion and ah? I don't know what she means. Uh, nice one, Scott. You're an, uh, you're, a, you're an inspiration. Good night, Scotty. Thanks for a brilliant show. Dinky do, everybody. Scotty McClue has left the building. Ta-da, lads.